From time to time, I receive suggestions as to which games I could play on my channel. Unfortunately, I don't have time to play every game that's suggested, even though I wish I could. But I do have time to give them a shot on the Sunday Sampler. So that's what we're going to do this week. We're going to try out a game called Orwell. Here's a description of Orwell. Big Brother has arrived and it's you. Investigate the lives of citizens to find those responsible for a series of terror attacks. Information from the internet, personal communications, and private files are all accessible to you. But be warned, the information you supply will have consequences. I know nothing about this game. All I know is that I think it's been suggested at least twice Maybe by the same person. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know what to expect. Uh, this is the first time I have ever loaded up this game. I just happen to have it um, in my uh, free library of games I can play. So, awesome opportunity to try out Orwell. It says, welcome, you have been accepted into Orwell. Please create a profile. We click a button, empty profile, create. Congratulations, you have been selected for the Orwell test phase. Please collect, a, uh, please create a profile. Uh, select a profile picture. Um, let's see, who do I want to look like? These are all of my choices here. And um, let's be this guy. That looks good. Enter your name. First and last name. Let's try that. Did you know Orwell follows the principles of the ethical codex? You may now enter your email address optional. Note, entering your e your mail address will allow us to inform you about updates on your case. The addresses entered will be handled with care and not used for any other purposes. Uh, I'm not going to enter my email address. Uh, be diligent. Your work has severe impact. Please agree to the following terms. I am aware that my actions may severely impact the lives of citizens of the nation. I will work thoroughly and judge objectively in the best of my belief. While working, I will adhere to the laws and jurisdiction of the nation. I agree to the terms stated above. Yeah, sure. Can't play the game unless you do that. Thank you for ensuring the peep <laughs> for ensuring the safety of the nation's people. Your registration is now complete. Logging in. <laughs> what is this game? <laughs> oh, interesting graphics. Freedom Plaza, April twelfth, twenty seventeen, seven forty eight in the morning. Okay, this dude's running. So it looks like we're looking at surveillance cameras here. Ooh, this guy. What's up with this guy? No record found, no record found on those two people. Is that unusual? Yeah, really interesting graphical style here. Another dude running over there. Is that suspicious? I don't know. Am I supposed to remember this stuff? Oh, here's somebody else. Checking this person out. No record found. Police record found. Uh-oh. Man, you're just walking along minding your own business and somebody's looking at your police records. What are we looking for? I'm not doing any of this, by the way. This is just the game. I'm not moving the camera or anything. Oh! Oh! Oh no. So terrorist attack in Freedom Plaza. Episode 1, the clocks were striking 13. Well, there's your problem right there. Ah. We're going to call him Sims. You're online. Good. Call me Sims. I will be your advisor on Orwell. Together we will form both the first and the last line of defense against terrorism. For this test phase, you are one of the first people to try out the Orwell system under real circumstances, selected from thousands of applicants from across the globe. Normally, conf oh, normally congratulations would be in order, but as you can see from the footage, there has been an incident. So let's get started. I've activated the reader tool for you. Thanks, Sims. Its purpose is storing bookmarks to online websites and documents for easy access. 
and to highlight when there is new information to be investigated. First, I want you to be informed of the situation. Our leading newspaper, The National Beholder, will bring you up to speed. Okay, there's a star here. Here's our reader. Bookmarks. The National Beholder. Headlines. The leading news... Blah, blah. Uh, feel free to browse the National Beholder. I've activated the profiler. Open the unknown person file once you're done. Okay, so we get a newspaper here. It's a good day to fall in love. Singular. Uh, the leading newspaper of the nation. Fast, precise, honest. Bomb obliterates Freedom Memorial and kills three. Bonton. Explosion destroys the Freedom Memorial in Bonton. Three people killed. Five severely injured. Authorities receive a strange letter. Whoa. And there's more stories down here. Read more. Okay, let's read this news story. Bonton. At approximately 7.50 p.m. Okay, I thought it was a.m. On Wednesday evening, an explosive device detonated at the Freedom Plaza in Bonton. According to, the, uh, according to official police reports, three people were killed and at least five bystanders were severely wounded. The Freedom Memorial was nearly completely destroyed. Police forces closed off the area immediately. Experts believe the attack, the attack was an act of terror, with police confirming that the explosive device was homemade and triggered from a short distance away using a cell phone signal. Police reports also confirmed that several hours earlier, an anonymous letter containing the first three stanzas of the German folk song, folk song Die Gedanken sind frei, the thoughts are free, excuse me if I pronounced that wrong, I know some of you watching speak German, uh, had reached local authorities, the, the thoughts are free. Prime Minister Blaine immediately issued a public press statement firmly condemning the assault and put the nation on high alert until the perpetrators have been brought to justice. And then there's a story here. Negotiations in Triflith failed. Uh, Pargesian president aborts negotiations with opposition. Violent riots in Triflith. Blaine encourages renewal. Is this important to our story? Triflith. Peace negotiations in the riot-ridden Pargesian capital city Triflith have been aborted without any result last night. Independent sources report that President Kassart abruptly cut off communication with opposition representatives as the latter presented a tangible plan for the organization of re-elections. The news about the premature cancellation of the negotiations caused thousands of people to resume demonstrations in the capital. It has been reported that demonstrators wearing hoods threw incendiary material into shop windows and onto cars. The police struggled to keep the situation under control. Prime Minister Blaine stated his worries about the negative developments regarding the political situation of the neighboring country and has requested both sides to resume diplomatic discussions. And movie shooting, shooting completed. 100 Grey Shadows, Valentine's Day 2018. Hilbury, shooting of Grey Shadows saga lasting four years finalized. Third part of the saga to hit movie theaters next Valentine's Day. I know as soon as I don't read this, it'll be something story-related. Hillberry, after a lengthy shoot in the hills of Bonton, self-proclaimed visionary director Sh Sumishi Aran announced that filming of his eagerly awaited romantic drama A Hundred Grey Shadows has finally come to an end. Announced via his Timelines profile yesterday, the brash director said he was eager to begin post-production and the final editing stages before the conclusion to the Grey Shadows series would hit the cinemas on Valentine's Day next year. The third and final chapter in the Grey Shadows saga, previous releases being a Grey Shadow and another Grey Shadow, was announced to be released almost four years ago, but was postponed numerous times due to production problems. Fans have speculated that this was largely due to the breakdown of Hollywood power couple Betty Avon and Mike McDeal, who have had long-lasting quarrels during the filming as a result. One production hand was reported to say that these spats were getting out of control and that completion of any scene featuring both actors was nothing short of pulling teeth. When we reached out to Rhubarb Productions to get a comment, they declined the rumors and claimed them to be mere speculation. I'm going to guess that that probably really had nothing to do with the story there, but I read it anyway. Well, he said uh, open the unknown person file when you're done, so let's go ahead and do that. The profiler holds all known information on those we investigate. 
The file you have opened is for our main suspect. The blue-haired woman at the CCTV footage shows before the assault is no longer, no longer, no stranger to the police. Take a look at the arrest record. Okay. Um, so date of birth, address, occupation, relationship. I'm clicking on stuff, but maybe we don't know this stuff. Physique. Um, backgrounds, personality, activities, aliases, accounts, contacts. Uh, I'm supposed to take a look at the arrest record. Um, I don't know how to do that. I mean, I'm clicking on stuff. You can hear me clicking, I'm sure. But, um, nothing's happening here. Where is the arrest record? It's like a little... Huh. Um... Okay, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. Huh. Um... Whoa. Okay, well I clicked this. That's something. New objective, adapt all data from the police record. April 13th, 2017. Today is a bright, cold day. Blah, blah, blah. Quote of the day. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. L.H. Courtney. Um. Oh, here we go. Didn't even notice this. Bookmarks. So here's the national beholder. Bonton Police Database, Watergate, Cassandra. Arrest records. The highlighted elements in the record are pieces of data that are able to be extracted. We call these elements data chunks. Hovering over data chunks will reveal their relevance to the case and any connections or information it may influence. Drag and drop all data chunks from the police database into a profile to upload them to our servers. So basically I'm doing data entry work here. So I guess this is a data chunk. Profile update, Cassandra Watergate. So, um... Oh, okay, we just simply drag it over here. This cannot be undone. Okay, upload complete. We have an arrest date, charge, assault on a police officer. So this is a little less than a year ago when this happened. Arresting officer L Lloyd Duncan, holding facility. Report suspect was arrested on site after officer Franklin had been struck by an unknown object and became unresponsive. The protesters at the origin of the assault were forcibly moved, where the suspect was found kneeling and weeping on the ground when asked to lay on the ground with her hands behind her back. The subject cooperated immediately. That makes her a suspect? Okay. So... Um... I don't see anything else highlighted here. New portraits. Okay, let's drag that over there. Okay. Very good. Pictures and names are crucial information for Orwell to identify a person. Information in documents can only become a data chunk when it can clearly be assigned to a target person. Add the reason for Miss Watergate's prior arrest that has just been unlocked. We will need this info to progress. Assault on a police officer. One related document found good. With the data you extracted from the police record, a new document can now be accessed. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in coincidence? I do not. Find data revealing where she attacked the police officer and you will see what I mean. Huh. So, we have found a news story from the National Beholder called Is This Woman a Terrorist? from July 25th, 2016. Woman allegedly injured a police officer two weeks ago. Remains in custody. Trial scheduled for August. Cassandra W. Simple protester or anti-governmental terrorist. Bonton. The case that keeps the media and the public guessing. 
Cassandra W., pictured above, who had allegedly injured a police officer severely two weeks ago, is still being held in police custody. The young woman is accused of having hit the victim's head with a large brick. The incident occurred during a rampage at the Freedom Plaza as part of a demonstration against the newest amendments to the government's model project, the Safety Bill. Due to the chaotic nature of the scene, police have not yet been able to connect the crime to the accused. Cassandra W., who is an artist by profession, has denied the accusations completely and has asked her fans to show their support. A trial has now been scheduled for mid-August. The case received nationwide attention when Catherine Delacroix, Secretary of Security, labeled the alleged perpetrator alongside the other rioters as anti-governmental terrorists. Well, okay, so she was, uh, she, she threw the brick at the cop in Freedom Plaza. Uh, she's being um, branded as a terrorist simply because she's with a protest group here in the Freedom Plaza and they're protesting against these new amendments to the safety bill. I don't think that necessarily makes her a terrorist. So we have this, which is um, another data chunk, previously arrested for assault on a police officer. The exact same location as the assault. Then she turns up there right before the explosion. Surely not a coincidence. I don't know, maybe she lives nearby. As you know, Miss Watergate is still running around freely. We should find out why. We should also gather more background information on her. I want to know who we're really dealing with. More background information. Well, we saw this. She's an artist, so that's at least something. So let's drag that over into Orwell. Ooh, and we found a related document. Oh yes, one who does street art by blowing memorials to pieces by any chance? This guy's a little too critical. Great! You have found another document. Before we go on, let's clarify your job and how it affects mine, shall we? You have extracted all the info I already knew about Miss Watergate. Starting now, I'm going into the case blind. The Orwell Ethical Codex dictates that investigators, like yourself, are the only ones allowed to access the documents of target persons. Advisors like me only get to see the data provided by the investigators. We will then draw conclusions and request action. Your primary job is to provide information you deem important. Never give away incorrect or misleading data. You may hit disable on a data chunk if you do not want to pass on to Orville. However, some data chunks might be necessary to progress in the case. Interesting. So we decide what that guy sees. Cassandra's port. Portfolio harboring outstanding art. Welcome to the port of Cassandra Watergate. She's smiling now. Hi, I'm Cassie, a colorful inhabitant of Wonderland right behind the rainbow. Glad you found me. Finally found the courage to quit my dull day job, focus on my art career, and put my stuff on portfolio. Below you will find a hand-picked selection of my latest works. You can browse through them by clicking on the arrows on the left and right side of the pictures below. See something you like? Why, of course you do. Because it's freaking awesome, isn't it? Leave a message on my Utel account, the Cassie92, and tell me which piece you'd like. I'm going to make a fine art print and ship it right away to your doorstep. Best thing, free of charge. Now off you go and have fun. Smiley face. Uh, tags, professional painting, pop art, various, Cassandra's gallery, my beloved furball, Kikiko. Definitely the only family I need. Cassandra's gallery, yep, that butte is me. I was never sure about the title though. The, business, the Businessman's Forgotten Daughter or Victim of Traditionalism in Pink. What do you think? So this is a piece of information. She's a daughter of entrepreneurs. Is that important? I don't know. Uh, a Christmas present for my darling. This was actually meant to be a private piece, but oh well, I'd have a hard time keeping it to myself. 
Uh, she's in a relationship. Okay, so we have to decide what information we're going to put into Orwell. What's important? What's not important? Well, um, this could this be is just this just her talking like oh I live in the lollipop gumdrop land or is there really a place called Wonderland and is there really a rainbow that she could be behind you know how adventure games are she could be down this street behind a building that has a rainbow on it so this may be useful to uh, find out where she lives or it might just be some colorful talk this tells that she quit her previous job to focus on an art career. I don't know if that's important or not. Now this could probably be interesting. This is more information we know. So I think that we're gonna wanna use this. So let's give this to Orwell. Good, you found a chat handle. That will allow us to overhear any conversation on that account. Okay, I didn't know that you were gonna do that. <laughs> And you're gonna spy on her, dude. Good grief. The listener has now been unlocked. New conversations will appear whenever they are started. All right, well, that's kind of interesting, I guess. Um, so uh, she's a daughter of entrepreneurs. I don't know if that's useful or not. And she's in a relationship. You know, that might be useful. We might want to talk to him. Um... And if I say she's in a relationship, they'll probably bug their talks with each other. Get some more information, see if she admits to um, blowing that place up. Uh, yeah, let's throw it all in here. <laughs> that's my that's my uh, strategy. Uh, I don't know. This might tell us where she is. So, you're under the impression that our wonderful Miss Watergate is really living in Wonderland? Somehow I doubt that. Call it intuition. Well, I thought it was a euphemism. I don't know. People's lives are hanging in the balance here. What if you pass me something I cannot identify as wrong so easily? You have got to be more careful next time around. He's berating me. Yeah, once it's in Orwell, you can't take it out. Um... Well, I'm glad I did that, so it's really, uh, really um, driving home the point not to give him in, 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 in unimportant information. Okay. Hmm, interesting. We should find out what that job was. Okay. Listener showing up here. And then we have another picture of her, which will probably be good to have. We're looking for her. So now we have two uh, photos of her. Uh, so I just threw everything in there. I kind of figured this is the starting of the game and we want to go ahead and throw everything in here anyway. Listener. Unknown person. She's chatting with something. Hey you, unknown person. Hey Jossie. Well now we know he's Jossie. I can't seem to find my credit card. I assume you took it, right? Uh, you got me, Sherlock. Is this her boyfriend, maybe? Who else would be taking her credit card? I'm in the middle of buying all of Bonton with that platinum card I lifted from your desk. Can't stop me now. Well, luckily for you, I don't mind you going on a splurge as long as you pick up some wine for dinner. Yeah, this is her boyfriend. Wine? What does Joseph Langley, my fearless attorney, oh, and all-around badass have in mind this time? Prob's just a business call from one of his favorite clients. Actually, yes, that is exactly what's going to happen. Very serious business, Cassandra. I thought as much. Hmm. Is this her boyfriend? Or is it just her attorney? Guess I'd better pick up shitloads of wine, and you'll have to get this client of yours pretty buzzed to handle all that business. Yeah, this is her boyfriend. One bottle should be fine. She's a lightweight. <laughs> oh, whatever. I guess I shouldn't pick up some of those party pills from Big Pharma, a.k.a. my parents, then. Uh huh. Oh, come on. I was only teasing. Speaking of your parents, when are you going to tell them about us? 
Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Gotta go now. Text you later. Bye. Okay, so this is her boyfriend. Uh, this might be interesting, knowing her uh, card. Well, it says stole a credit card from an unknown person. You know what? I'm not going to throw that into Orwell because this is her boyfriend, right? You know, I borrow my girlfriend's credit card sometimes. She just borrowed mine today to buy groceries. It happens. She didn't steal it. She borrowed it. So if we throw this in there, it's going to look like she's stealing credit cards from unknown people. So I'm not going to give that to Orwell. Um, now, this is interesting, though, because um, this is another person that we want to we want to know about. Interesting related profiles updates. So we're going to throw that in there. You now have a profile for a related person. It can be accessed via the profiler. Data chunks will only appear for targeted persons and can only be extracted into their relevant profiles. Okay, so we've got this Langley guy here. Uh, and this is kind of interesting here too. Daughter of pharmaceutical entrepreneurs. We wanted to know this, so let's put together a picture of who this person is. Watergate, pharma entrepreneurs. That does ring a bell. Okay, so we've got some new stuff showing up here in our reader. There's nothing else I want to give to um, Orwell. Like I said, I don't want to. I don't want to throw this in there because that's going to just make her look bad. And all she really did was borrow her boyfriend's credit card. So let's go back to the reader here and see what's shown up. Well, Watergate Pharmaceuticals. Where did Watergate come from? Um, I don't know where Watergate came from, right? All we saw was... Um, oh, her name is Watergate. <laughs> All right. Products. Watergate Pharmaceuticals, company, jobs, products. Watergate Pharmaceuticals enriches lives with our industry-leading range of products, making an important contribution to your well-being. Mood-elevating medication. Below you will find a small selection of our most popular products. Uh, a he a hexotol, a hexotol forte, cough drops that fight against irritation of the throat based on natural herbs. Compensum, activating pills against migraines and strong headaches. Focusin, medication that increases concentration and cerebral performance. I could use some of that. Uh, Forwool Active, medication for the alleviation of arthritic joint pain. Methorin, antidepressant to help stabilize your emotions. Spirin, an all-around painkiller that dissolves in water. Zamarolon Night, soothing pills for a good night's rest against occasional sleeping problems and for acute application when suffering from insomnia. So that's interesting. They make a lot of products. Uh, why? Let's see party pills so that since they're going to be drinking she's saying I guess I shouldn't pick up some pills party pills what kind of pills are part what do you think would be party pills um yeah I don't really see any of these being party pills right um painkillers maybe company. The name Watergate has been inseparable from progression and improvement of pharmaceutical research for more than 80 years. Watergate Pharmaceuticals is one of the nation's leading companies in the area of medicine and at the same time is the largest medication exporter to all areas of the world. The business Watergate Pharmaceuticals Inc. has been in the hands of the Watergate family owning and managing the firm ever since its foundation in 1931. So these people are rich. Bruno is the CEO. The CEO of Watergate Pharmaceuticals, Inc. is Bruno Watergate, grandson of our founder, Edgar Watergate. Apart from working in the family business, Mr. Watergate is also the founder of the Central Pharmacy Congress and head of the charity foundation Children of Parges. Dr. Alice Watergate, head of research and development. <laughs> uh, Dr. Alice Watergate, co-partner of the firm with her husband, Bruno, holds a PhD in biology and chemistry. She leads the research and development Laboratories here at Watergate Pharmaceuticals. So we found out what her previous job was. She was a junior COO. Carrying the family tradition to the next generation, Alice and Bruno's daughter, Cassandra, 
will soon be joining the executive ranks. Her business acumen and unique flair will write the next chapter of our 85 year strong legacy. But she quit that job. We have a new portrait of her, so let's throw that in there. Is that actually the same person? Well, without blue hair, yes, yeah, she does look a little different. Uh, she was a junior COO. We did want to know what her previous job was, so let's throw that in there. Appointed to be COO of a pharmaceutical company, probably by one of her parents. Being an artist and a junior COO seems quite odd. She also mentioned she had quit a dull job, didn't she? Uh, documents that you have already reviewed may be updated from time to time as events unfold. The reader will notify you when that happens. The National Beholder just published a new article. You may want to look to take a look and see if there's any new information available. All right, I'll get to it. Um, oh boy, we could put her father and mother in here. Oh, by all means. <laughs> I'm such a good investigator. Oh, now I see. Keeping it a family affair. Oh, okay, so he didn't know about that before. So, I see. Um, so, uh, jobs. And let's see. Looking for suitable candidates for the following positions. Chief Operating Officer. We're urgently looking for a Chief Operating Officer to replace the retired, formerly appointed predecessor. So we could... I mean, that seems like duplicate information. Or maybe I was wrong and nothing stays in the family. Ouch. Okay. This is probably what she meant about quitting her job. Good. Yeah. Duh. Alright, we don't need to read all that. Go back to the reader here. And let's see, uh, procedure closing raises manipulation suspicions. This is an old article here. Um, investigation into the malicious injury of a police officer has been dropped due to lack of evidence. Speculated that the accused parents manipulated the trial. Aha, interesting. Oh. Orwell informs me you just encountered conflicted data chunks. Whenever the content of two data chunks are at odds with one another, those will be shown as conflicted. When you extract one of the data chunks containing a conflict, the others will become invalid immediately. I'd highly recommend that you clarify the context of the conflict before you proceed, though this is your decision. Once the information has been parsed, there is no way to reverse your choice. Huh. So, the case that has been at the center of media attention for the last month has finally come to an end. Cassandra W. was acquitted of the alleged assault against a police officer before the trial took place, with the case being closed due to the lack of evidence yesterday. However, the case might be reopened should new evidence be discovered. The, sub the suspect's lawyer, Joseph Langley, her boyfriend, pictured above, welcomed this outcome. At no point has there ever been any valid evidence that my client was guilty at no point at all. The revered defense attorney commented during a post-trial press gathering. The defense successfully brought video evidence depicting the incident in question, which eventually tuned, or turned the tide of the proceedings. Huh, they brought video evidence. Meanwhile, the relatives of the victim expressed their disappointment on hearing the result of the lawsuit. They openly voiced their concerns that the wealthy family of the accused might have influenced the outcome in her favor. The victim, a father of two young sons, was rushed into hospital after the incident in mid-July where he is still in an induced coma, unresponsive to treatment. Man, he must have got clobbered. So, um, right here, huh, show conflict. This is the conflict? Um, so these are the two conflicting updates? There's a conflict with another data chunk in procedure closing raises manipulation suspicion. So if I do show conflict, I guess it's showing me this, huh? This is conflicting evidence? Okay. Um, 
Now, we can only give Orwell one of these two things. If we put this one in here, then it looks like case closed, right? But this makes it look fishy. Now, the fact that there was, um, you know, he, he, he successfully brought video evidence depicting the incident in question, which eventually turned the tide of the proceedings. So, I mean, if there's video of it, what are they suggesting? That the wealthy family um, doctored the video? or So, yeah, we have to decide which one of these two things to put in there. Now, one of them is a fact, and one of them is speculation. This is the fact. The case has been closed due to lack of evidence. This is just speculation. So I'm going to throw this in here because this is actually fact. That is what I figured. A pity that the CCTV feed did not actually help. Did not actually help accuse her? Is that what you're trying to say? Maybe it will today. Okay. Currently, I am thinking that our Miss Watergate underwent quite a radical change, don't you agree? Let's find out what happened in between these two lives of hers. What may have caused this radical shift? Uh-huh. What's this up here? Crime rate continues to drop. The Ministry of Security has presented latest numbers on crime statistics in the country. Never before have there been so few violent crimes. On Thursday morning, the Ministry of Security published the new crime statistic report for the preceding year. According to the report, the number of recorded criminal offenses decreased by 4.8% in comparison to last year. The crime rates have been continuously declining over the past several years as a direct result of the implementation of the safety bill, which we can click on. Secretary of Security Catherine Delacroix appeared very pleased by these numbers and declared this development an outstanding result of successful safety policy. When confronted with the recent assault on, in Bonton, she once again admitted the ambitious goals of the government have not yet been accomplished. She further mentioned that activities are currently being established, which will have a considerable impact presenting further, preventing further incidents. This is the thing that uh, she's protesting against, the safety bill. Oh boy. This is a website for the party, our principles put into action. The safety bill, crimes per 100,000 population. So here is crimes that reached a high in 2008, started to go down, the party is elected in government, still going down, safety bill is passed and it continues to decline. Well. That doesn't tell me anything. I mean, it was already going down before the safety bill was passed, so maybe crime was going down anyway. The safety bill is a collection of safety-centered laws and statuses created with the ultimate goal to protect the freedom of the nation's citizens. Central to the safety bill is the simplified sped-up process of taking investigative measures against criminal suspects and their prosecution, as well as the provision of an increased budget for safety-related expenses. So I'm okay with an increased budget for safety related expenses, but sped up process of taking investigative measures? Sounds like maybe you don't have to go through due diligence to get camera feeds and such. I don't know. The safety bill also paved the way for stricter regulations concerning immigration and general travel into or transiting through the nation. It also became mandatory to inform employers whenever an applicant or employee is an ex-convict or otherwise regarded potentially dangerous. See, that's bad, in my opinion, you know, ex-convict. Since the safety bill has come into effect in 2011, the total numbers of acts of crime and terrorism committed have been decreasing continuously and the trend is ongoing to date. Well, yeah, it was also decreasing before the bill was passed. The Parge's peacekeeping mission, the terrorist incident of 2008, was a terrible consequence of the premature retreat of our troops from Pargis, a region torn by civil unrest for years, by the order of the previous government. To fix our predecessor's mistakes, the party, when elected in 2009, immediately made preparations to send our highly reliable soldiers back to safeguard the region for the good of the inhabitants of both countries alike. After the Parge's peacekeeping mission had been, had been signed in 2011, 
our troops were sent off to the neighboring country to perform tasks, including the distribution of aid packages containing food in addition to health and hygiene products to the mostly impoverished population, the rebuilding of infrastructure, particularly hospitals and schools, upholding the law and public order alongside the removal of war relics such as anti-personnel mines or unexploded bombshells, training local police and military forces. Due to a recent stabilization in the Parges, we have been able to reduce the number of stationed forces while leaving the overall goals of the peacekeeping mission intact. It's quite a bill here. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here that I don't think we need to read unless there's something highlighted that we want to put into our Orwell. I mean, I gotta draw a line somewhere. There's a lot of stuff to read here. Cassandra's timeline. Nice. Status, you're invited to tea inside the rabbit hole. Timelines, Cassandra Watergate, pop artist and free thinker. Birthday, we've got a birth date now. A uh, place of residence in a interest art music activism. She likes the targets, painting, Alice in Wonderland, and my cat, Kiko. Cassandra Watergate posted on March 1st, 2017, 1101 AM. Woohoo! First day in freedom, far away from the shackles of Watergate Pharma. So this is the day that she left the company. Jake says, what? Who's going to pay for your stuff now? Mommy and daddy won't like this. And she responds, listen, Jake, I am not daddy's little girl anymore. My art already got me a lot of money. More than enough to pay all my bills, don't you worry about me. Then on January 29th, she said, Despised puppets of the state. You have finally managed to destroy us entirely. There is nothing left to do but congratulate you. These are my personal wishes to you from the deepest abyss of my heart. Fuck all of you government lackeys. Most painfully, Cassandra. Mary Bly responds, says, Sweetie, what is the matter? That totally doesn't sound like you. We haven't hung out for ages. You gotta get out from time to time. You'd feel much better. Yeah, you know, I mean, what happened? Why did she post this on January 29th? You know? Oh, this is going backwards in time. This is the most recent one. So January 29th. I mean, this incident that we've heard about uh, hitting the police officer happened in April of 2016. So she says, what's the matter? That totally doesn't sound like you. We haven't hung out for ages. You gotta get out from time to time. You feel much better. Cassandra responds and says, Mary, just shut your freaking mouth, okay? I'm not in the mood for your stupid act. I told you again and again, I cannot deal with this right now. Okay, so she's a little, little, um, I don't wanna say moody. <laughs> Mary Bly, broken, broken rela relationship. There's a conflict with one unknown data chunk, all right? And then Mary says, okay, you know what? I am really sorry that I still care about my best friend, no matter how often she decides to give me the cold shoulder. But in that case, that's in the past now. Okay. Uh, so on August 22nd, she is in a relationship with Joseph Langley. Yeah. So it might be good to know the date that this took place. With her lawyer? Hmm, might be noth noteworthy. He didn't know that already? <laughs> I guess not. Uh huh. Yeah, I guess I have to remember what it is that I've already put in here. Why is that still highlighted? Uh, and then August 10th. The Beholder actually wrote about me being freaking redeemed of this shit. But surprise, surprise, they had to mention the speculations over my parents buying me out. Makes the click counts go boom, doesn't it? Alright. Yeah, this, this is a lot of stuff, man. This is a, this is a lot of stuff. Yeah. So anyway, here's Mary, her best friend, on April. Uh, when did the explosion happen? This happened uh, April 13th. Or, let's see, or actually it happened on April 12th, right? So, the, the, the bombing 
took place on April 12th. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm getting things confused. April is when the bombing took place. When did the um, police guy get hit? Two weeks ago. So, okay, July of 2016 is when the police thing happened. When she was accused of hitting the police officer. Why is there a little star there? I guess because there's new stuff in there. Okay, so anyway, back to her timeline, which is basically her Facebook page. So, here we go. April 12th, 2016, she made a post like an hour before the explosion. The explosion happened at 7.50 p.m. on April 12th. Oh, 2017. Dog on it. All right, never mind. Uh, she, so she says, well, that is what happens when you do my... Oh, that's she's responding to this. Jeez, so confusing. Why does this have to be in backwards order? Can you tell I don't really use social media all that much? Ooh la la, wee wee non. Having an amazing shopping tour with my Mary my best friend of all times but you really should consider paying a visit to your hairstylist soon darling and then she says that oh that's what happened when you when you do my hair uh this is when she likes this band called the targets um and then she updated her profile picture let's go ahead and drag that in there and get another crazy picture of her in there okay so she changed her profile picture on July 6th. You know, this was right about the time um, the attack on the police officer happened, right? See, this um, injured a police officer two weeks ago. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us the exact date. It just says two weeks ago, right? So two weeks ago from July 15th would have been... The sixth, right? Is that is that right? Two weeks? No, it would have been. Um, oh gosh, no, not the sixth. Would have been the eleventh. Uh, so if it was exactly two weeks ago, it would have been July eleventh. So this was posted a few days before the that th that incident happened. She's talking about a, a concert. Um, she's asking her about her hair. And um Kasarth's Kas Kasarthus. Huh, okay. Looks nice. It's a whole new you. You will also need a new name then. What about Kasarthus? Henceforth, Cassandra shall be known to the world as Kasarthus. Is that important? And then this guy, that's the spirit kiddo. Now I'd like to, I'd like to invite you to our little activist group if you want to join us. It would be nice to have you with us for the protest on the Freedom Plaza on Friday. This is interesting, right? That's pretty interesting. Invited to an activist group. This may place her at the Freedom Plaza on that day. So I think that's important. An activist group? Is there anything more specific? Why did it just go ding ding? Oh, new listener. Let's listen in. Uh, a new session with Joseph Langley. Hey, did you hear about the Freedom Plaza bombing? Yeah, don't remind me. You know I have a history with that place. She's a slow typer. Oh, she typed a lot. Already fucking me up enough that I have to catch a bus from there every day. Aha. Too many bad memories, and now I was just there moments before this happened. Ugh, I never should have gone to that damn protest. Darling, you don't need to justify yourself to anybody, especially not me. So this, see, like I said earlier, this Sims guy was talking about, boy, it sure is suspicious that she's at that place again. 
I said, maybe she lives nearby. Well, yeah, apparently she does live nearby. Cassandra says, I was so happy when Godfells accepted me into thought. Huh? I desperately wanted to go to prove my worth to the cause. Joseph says, think of it this way. If you have not gone to the protest, then you never would have been wrongfully indicted and then we would have never met. Yeah, and I would not have been called a terrorist in all the papers. You are not a terrorist, okay? Aren't I? Ain't I? You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. ka -ching. Was that supposed to be my credit card and a cash register? Something like that, I guess. Okay. I hope you like uh, Chateau Margot. I don't get the joke. Great, so you've decided to bankrupt me. Okay, maybe that's an expensive wine. Yes, sir. Always ready to pull the money out of innocent pockets. Anyway, I got the good stuff. Now I'm headed to my handsome boyfriend, Joseph, for dinner. Huh, this would have been a data chunk if we hadn't already put it in there. Uh, Here's the thing. I've got an important appointment tonight. It's surprising that I have schedule and I can't postpone it. You've got to be kidding me. Very sorry, darling. We'll see each other tomorrow. You always have an appointment. Yeah, she seems to have a short fuse. Appointment here, appointment there, appointment every fucking where. How can you constantly do this to me, darling? Please just calm down. Yeah, she's got a bit of a temper. I'm not liking her very much. Have you taken your methrin? Yes, damn it. Is the only thing that matters to you that I am on fucking happy pills all day? Darling, please, it's nothing like that and you know it. So I keep my mouth shut whenever you leave me hanging. Uh, If I don't show up to this appointment, I risk losing a very important client. Fine. Don't you understand that? This is lovely, being in the middle of their fight. Oh no, I totally understand. Don't you risk losing that very important client of yours now. Cassie, don't be like that. I get it. I guess I'm just not an important client anymore. Oh, come on, Cassie. Oh, good lord. How long is this going to go on? Going home now in case I'm getting up on that priority list of yours anytime soon. Please. She's, yeah. She's a little unstable. Not my favorite kind of person. Um, have you taken your methrin? I don't think it's important that she's on medication. I think the only important thing here is that um, she catches a bus there every day. Which I think will go a long way towards, you know, making her less suspicious. Meaning her presence there before the bombing could be coincidence after all. Yeah, you think so, Sims? I'll reserve my thoughts until you find more evidence. Um, but this, I don't know, man. So sh this is a, a, an activist group called Thought. Well, let's drag this in here and see if we can learn what this Thought is. An activist group called Thought. Interesting. Maybe this is what influenced her and who is Godfell or Goldfells. I thought it was Godfells. We should find something that shows her current attitude and see if we're following the right person. Her current attitude. Um, oh, it is Goldfells. I thought it said Godfells. All right. So, nothing new is showing up. There's no... Well, maybe there is. Oh, we've got head, new headlines here. Uh, this is the crime rate continuing to drop. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, that's not new. I'm not sure why this was showing up as a new thing. I already, I already looked at the headlines. I already read these. And there's nothing new in here. Nothing new here. I don't. We don't know what Insider is yet. All right, well, so there's still more stuff to find out about her. Um, I have to imagine that as the game progresses, we're going to be introduced in, to more people, like this Goldfells guy that we were just introduced to. Um, and then, yeah, we've got like a little bit of a thing here, Goldfells. Well, we know that he's a member of a group called Thought, but we don't know anything about Thought. Yeah. Yeah. Know his contacts. Uh, and then um, Harrison O'Donnell, who's this? In contact with. 
Who's Harrison O'Donnell? I don't remember that name. Um, I wish I could see what data chunk I dragged in there that caused that to show up. Yeah, I don't know. Harrison O'Donnell. Hmm, I don't remember that one. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, as we learn about more people, we'll drag more of them in here. And uh, I would imagine that um, depending upon how you play it and how good of a job you do, you eventually will accuse somebody of the bombing. And I wonder if you'll ever know for sure whether you accused the right person. I don't know. Pretty interesting, though. Uh, I can see this being a pretty fun game to um, dig through. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about um, reading it all to you guys because it's a lot of reading. My mouth is very dry now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty cool game, pretty unique. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. Pretty neat. So um, that is where I'm going to end this uh, Sunday sampler. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about this game. Have you played it? Uh, does it look like something that you would play? Let me know in the comments below. And um, if you'd like this week's Sunday sampler, let me know by leaving me a like. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope that I will see you in another video sometime soon. Take care.